So it crashed. Hello, we're the Mac Initiative and we're attempting to build the world's fastest jet-powered model aircraft. In our previous video, you saw our subscale prototype fly for the very first time. Lord. To be honest with you, that was a bit of a fluke. Our launch method just wasn't reliable. And to be honest, it probably wouldn't scale to the full-size aircraft either. But over the last few months, we've gone through several launcher iterations, and we now have a design that we're really happy with. The Kingfisher has a tiny wing area to reduce drag and maximise its top speed. But this means that its takeoff speed is over 50 miles an hour, making it pretty difficult to fly. To perfect the handling of the Kingfisher, we built a 60% scale 3D printed electric prototype, which is a lot easier to repair. This is designed to match the Kingfisher's very high wing cube loading of 34, meaning it mimics the Kingfisher's handling and high takeoff speed. So our test campaign has focused on the two areas we feel the flyer is most at risk, the takeoff and the stability and control of the aircraft. To deal with the stability and control, we've added increasing complexity in the autopilot system, starting with a gyro. To our surprise, the aircraft wouldn't even lift off the ground. The lack of a headwind and slightly further forward CG was preventing the aircraft from rotating off of the launcher. We even tried hand launching the aircraft, but the wing loading is far too high. We realised we needed something to assist the aircraft with rotating. So, we looked at the current world record holder's design and we added a toilet roll under the nose to help prop it up. Three, two, one, launch! Unfortunately, this didn't work either. We were flying at a different field with much rougher terrain and we realised that the tarp was generating far too much friction. So, we completely redesigned the launcher, this time with a plywood runway and some wheels to for a much smoother uh, takeoff. Several weeks passed due to bad weather on weekends and test range availability, so we used the opportunity to upgrade the 3D print with a new orange design that's a lot more visible, and we also added replaceable tail fins, nacelles and sacrificial wing tips to make it a lot more upgradable and repairable at the field. Whilst Dan did that, I was replacing the gyro with a Matek autopilot running Archer Pilot. This gave us both logging and the ability to auto-tune during flight. Even better, the gains could then be transferred directly to the Pixhawk on the main Kingfisher. So I took the opportunity to add in telemetry via Yappy script directly onto the transmitter, which massively helped with debugging, and also added a GPS which gave us altitude and speed estimates. So we got really close this time, just weren't quite able to keep it straight on the launcher. We considered several different methods of fixing this, finally converging on a guide wire running down the full runway with a groove in the cart to keep the cart aligned. Additionally, we added a remote deployment mechanism, knowing that for the real flight, we wouldn't just be able to hold on to the aircraft because the jet engine would be spewing out extremely hot gases. We encountered a barometer fault on our autopilot, and this prevented us from booting. I was able to fix this by disabling the barometer in the firmware, as this is not needed for our flight modes, and this allowed us to fly.
to go when you are. Yes! So clearly it crashed, but overall we got several minutes of flight time in both manual and stabilised flight modes, and we now have a launch method that's repeatable, so this is a huge improvement over our previous flights. But we know what you really want, so let's look at the logs and see what went wrong. The Maytag flight controller recorded the speed, attitude and control surface deflections right up into impact. To help explain this, Max has animated a flight path in Blender. The aircraft launched at 44 miles an hour and reached a top speed of 116 miles an hour, although it did have capacity to go much faster than this, albeit it was quite sensitive in pitch and roll. And the logs show that the aircraft is controllable in manual and stabilised mode, but it does require tuning. We believe the crash started whilst changing from fly-by-wire-A or stabilised to the acro flight mode. Because the flight controller was untuned, the aircraft was unable to meet the pitch set point in stabilised mode, and so the pilot was manually forcing the nose down. During the switch to acro, the aircraft was temporarily stick-free, causing it to pitch up. It subsequently stalled and pitched down, entering a steep dive. The pilot tried to recover this, however the autopilot gains produced a slow response, limiting the pitch authority to recover from the dive. This can be fixed using further tuning. We would be interested to hear your theories. Overall, we're really happy with the progress. We clearly need a bit more practice with the landing and we need to tune the autopilot before we risk the main kingfisher. We've also built a steerable car as an alternative launch method. This will allow us to reduce the setup time, but this needs a bit more further refinement. In the weekends where we haven't been able to fly, we've been preparing the Kingfisher for flight with some upgrades, including new linkages and an umbilical fuel system. We've also looked into a Mark II design that improves the repairability and surface finish, but before we do that, we're committed to flying the Mark I Kingfisher. Overall, we really hope you enjoyed the video and we look forward to speaking to you soon.